Hi everyone, it is Thursday already and that means it's the weekly wrap up here at the Wildcat Sanctuary. Uh, sometimes I can't believe how quickly the weekly wrap ups come again and again and again. Um, there's just not, not enough hours in the day to run a sanctuary, I say hey. Um, everybody's been busy here, but as part of the weekly wrap up, I always love to give you guys an update on what's kind of been happening behind the scenes for the last week and a little bit of what's ahead. Um, and it's been uh, a lot of work. As you guys know, last week I was uh, part of doing the BCSA steering committee uh, retreat uh, via Zoom. And a lot of stuff goes on that's outside of the sanctuary too that I've been trying to um, talk to not only the staff about so they know what's going on, um, but also just kind of, there's so much more work than just inside the four walls um, when you're running an animal welfare organization. So some of that is I've been uh, very thankful that PAWS, which is another GFAS, a sanctuary in California, performing animal welfare society, runs a international conference on uh, or a conference on the international captive wildlife crisis and they've asked me to be a panelist at their upcoming conference in November um, so I'm really excited to really be an ambassador for the captive wildlife crisis why it needs to end um, kind of what's been going on with the big cat public safety act and definitely sharing the small cat crisis uh, and what's been going on there and how the Wildcat Sanctuary has really been at the forefront to try and lead that charge and make some change for the small uh, captive wildcats and hybrid cats. And then also a few of us sanctuaries got reached out by uh, AZA's Fila Tag group, which is a, kind of the feline group. I'm trying to not get too scientific on you guys, uh, but really about is there a way that we can unify with the AZA, the American Zoo Association, um, on the felids, the cats. Uh, and so we don't know what that looks like, but we always know that trying to find common ground and working together makes us stronger. So that's something I'm definitely interested in doing and attending the conference uh, and really kind of some working groups on how uh, sanctuaries can work well with uh, zoos and how we can work together to end the captive wildlife crisis to make sure cats always have permanent um, and safe homes and that they're always cared for. And then on top of that, there is a wildlife Conf confiscation network, which was uh, a group that started kind of through AZA, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, museums, sanctuaries, uh, for any wildlife that's confiscated and it started at the borders um, kind of California and that can be much broader than what we're talking about um, You know big cats wild cats. It can be uh, it can be uh, Reptiles it can be birds. It can even be coral <laughs> and things like that But trying to work together collaboratively to set up a network um, when those type of things happen whether at borders or in cities or uh, import cities, even maybe Chicago, and they're found, um, how do we best react uh, as a network to be able to provide solutions for those confiscated animals and species? So of course, we'll be participating along with other sanctuaries, um, hopefully just on the big cats, but uh, the network, you know, we have trailers, we have crates, we have transport, so there's different things that uh, can be helpful. But what I really love when I talk about all of this is even though all of us groups don't always see eye to eye on everything um, from the zoos, from the museums, from the sanctuaries, it is starting a dialogue and we're all seeing the need to help displaced wildlife, not only captive wildlife, but wildlife that's being taken out of the wild. And um, really it's the first time in history all these organizations continue um, to come together and trying to start having this dialogue. Now the sanctuaries have been doing it with each other for many years. I'm sure the zoos have been doing it through AZA for many years, but we're crossing kind of industry uh, boundaries to see what we can all do more for animals by working together in areas that actually make sense. So stay tuned on that, um, but I'm always optimistic when people reach, uh, reach across the aisle to each other and wanna do more and better for our world and for animals. 
Uh, and on top of that, you saw that Judson did a great job on media. Um, the Duluth Media was down here celebrating our 25th anniversary, talking about our cat cam that's been on YouTube uh, and things like that. And it's just always really, really nice when our communities here in Minnesota and even around the globe uh, share the work we do and introduce us to more people who can help end the captive uh, wildlife crisis. So that was great to see. And so we're still in the depths of Miracle Match, which is our biggest fundraiser. Um, and as you guys have helped us meet so many really uh, meaningful goals for the animals. And this week we are trying to get a new UTV covered vehicle, uh, all-terrain vehicle, utility vehicle. And uh, there's so many uses for that. It just seems like yesterday we bought the one that's there with the plow. And I had to keep going, wasn't it just last year? And when I counted back, it was like always, almost 2016. We've bought, and you have bought, a lot of UTVs for feeding and getting around and construction. But this one is special because part of, we talked about in the past is, part of our safety protocol is if we ever think there could or possibly be a breach of security, which includes bad weather, um, it might include uh, being concerned that wind struck a fence, uh, it could be uh, anything that we had new residents or new, you know, that might be more danger or flight risks or of any kind of things that could happen. We always do our inspections after poor weather or if we thought there was a breach of security in any way in a fully covered hard vehicle. And that's for the safety, of course, if there was a fence down, an escape, anything like that. And luckily in our history, we have redundancy and so much protocol that that hasn't happened, but we always want to be prepared for the worst. And we have spring coming up, summer season coming up, which is our stormy season here at the Wildcat Sanctuary. Um, that means high winds, a lot of times tornadoes, uh, and we have redundant protocol in place of locking cats in their buildings, doing double checks, things like that, monitoring weather, overnight staff, that 24-7 staff that we have. Uh, but this covered vehicle would be amazing. Um, Jesse and Bobby, our facilities people, just said the other one is on its last leg. We put another $1,200 into it just to keep it going for the season, um, but it's really time to invest in a new one. And once you add those hard sides and hard top, it becomes quite expensive, but it's, it's very necessary. Um, we do have vehicles that we can use too in the cover top, but the other thing that's really awesome is the UTV is not only a safety vehicle, but it can be a daily husbandry vehicle as well and dual purpose for feeding, cleaning, um, you know, doing maintenance. And then on top of it, it has a third use. It, we add a snow plow. And even though we have a plow truck, that plow truck is very large and can't get in a lot of the hallways in smaller areas around the animals. And so that UTV really helps the staff cut time versus manual shoving, shoveling or snow blowing. Uh, so your donations now are gonna help us get that UTV purchased this year. We also know there's a wait list, so we definitely wanna get it purchased and be prepared. So when you give this week, um, your $50 becomes $100, $200 becomes $400, and we have a full match for that. So um, we are trying to raise uh, quite a few thousands of dollars to cover that UTV, so any gift you can give is extremely important. Um, and part of Miracle Match not only is about raising money, it's about celebrating 25 years of saving lives, and it's also about remembering the lives that have been saved by all of you. And I know today, uh, Chipino and Sultania um, came up on the stories. And uh, it's so strange how all these things interconnect because last night um, and the day before, I was just writing uh, an update on the Argentina Tigers. And we'll be sharing those, that with you probably next month. Um, I really like to make sure that the entire team knows what I'm writing, especially on all continents before I publish it. Uh, and publish an update, but it just reminds me of when Sultania and Chupino came. And honestly, it wasn't until a week before I think they arrived that we had any idea that they were such geriatric cats over 20 years old. And I remember like stopping in my tracks and thinking, if we would have known that, we probably would have said, no, we don't want to transport cats those that age. Um, 
Luckily, we didn't know it because they both handled the trip really well. They had exams before they left Argentina and showed signs of old age, chronic kidney disease and things like that, but otherwise were pretty healthy. Um, I mean, obviously, Sultania had a lot of help she needed from being in the type of enclosure she was in. Uh, but even though Sultania only was here a year at the sanctuary, I think of that transport and that travel for her was probably a 36 hour on the plane and travel and then another uh, 24 hours here, which is a stressful time. I mean, that's for sure. But it's small to give then a year back of pure blissfulness that she had. Um, we all saw her blossom, her scars on her face diminished, her, her coat grew full and you know full from the nutrition. Uh, Chipino would reach through the fence and just loved her so much. And she had her manger. Um, once she discovered soft straw and substrate, um, we always saw her in that. So uh, it just, we never know the next cat we rescue, what their age is gonna be, what their species is gonna be, what size, what their personality is gonna be like, what their physical ailments are gonna be like. Um, and, you know, each one teaches us a story and Chipino and Saltania sure, sure taught us resilience. Um, Saltania for sure. Chipino was resilient, but he was also the most sweet hearted lion. Uh, he definitely went to the, the land of Oz and got the biggest heart. He didn't even need courage, he needed heart. He got the Tin Man's heart um, because he was just so sweet to so many other cats and a bridge for so many. So as bittersweet as these memories are that I'm seeing, even like Kitty the Lynx that came up, what a doll she was and how special. It is so heartwarming to see the impact uh, you have helped us made on so many lives through the 25 years. So I hope you're enjoying them as much as I am. Now on to what's going on here at your sanctuary. The sanctuary, I know it's your favorite thing, so I leave it for last sometimes. Um, but uh, Harley the Bengal, we talked about we moved him into the catio here last week while we're tearing down the bungalows, building the temporaries that we built. And it was pretty muddy and wet last week, so we tried not to move. Um, we didn't want to downgrade the space of the cats that had the, cat, the hybrid area torn down for the reconstruction. So he went out on the catio. He likes being an outdoor cat on occasion when you can tell he knows his caregivers because when they're in the office and they call him, he runs right in and is out and about with all of the cats in here making a lot of noise, um, but then retreats back out to the catio for safety. So we were hoping, hoping he could merge in here, um, but he did a... Uh, have uh tear he did urinate down the wall he's tried a couple other times we don't know if it's stress or not and we don't know how much he really wants to be in with the other cats um he had a quiet bungalow with andre and jewel and so um we're still determining if he's gonna merge here but we're hoping in the next week or two uh the areas will be dry where he's going and we can see how he does there and let him choose where he wants to be and where he wants to kind of settle in um, why we build out uh, the new hybrid area. So another thing is your lovely boy, the tiger Dash. Um, Dash is gonna be seen for an exam next week. He, <laughs> here's some of these that they, you know, you'd think I would know, but Dash is growing. He's growing into an adult. He is getting that big, big nose that Winona, or that Marcus had. He's had that wide nose since he was a cub. Um, it's now getting like a little hook and hump on it, similar to Kiara the dog, and the fur's wearing down on it. So at first we thought he maybe um, had a little swelling there because he does bat his toys around with his nose and stuff all the time. Um, and then we thought maybe it's just him, but we're like, it's not bothering him, but we'd like to know. So we are next week, he's at the end of the week, gonna be on a vet day. Um, and we're just gonna sedate him in the field in his room and check to make sure there's not like a soft tissue abscess. So nothing we're too concerned about, but um, Dash, he's, he's always keeps us on our toes. In addition, um, his habitat has a cattle panel chute that goes into the building. He has been throwing his toys so hard and so much around his enclosure and especially I'm assuming he's trying to get them into his room. And so unlike a lot of cats that pick them up and try and walk in their room and can't because they're too big, Dash just bangs them and tries to um, get them in his doorway. And he has damaged the fence and the chute by doing that. So 
Tyler and some of the caretakers went yesterday and cut out that wall and rebuilt the fence. Um, and we're doing some inspections today and we'll do some finishing work this week. Um, he has full access again. It didn't take very long, but um, yeah, there's a couple areas in his fencing that Dash the Destroyer is being his true self. Uh, also today you guys saw in the live post that little uh, Asian Leopard Cat Apollo had a vet exam. And so Olivia might've told you, but we've been kind of holding off a little bit on these guys. You know, we really love to do formal intake exams and everything else. But when they had just moved from the breeder's house to the SPCA, the shelter, they had gotten sedated and spayed and, and original vaccines there. Then they had moved here. Then they were in the quarantine. Then we had to move them temporary while we merged them. Sometimes stress, can play more of a factor um, and doing another exam and stressing them out more can be more of a detriment. So that's something we weigh with our vet staff and Dr. Campbell all the time. So now we're at the point where um, they're due for another round of vaccines and that would mean multiple pokes. And so it was decided that let's do the formal intake exam now, give them all their vaccines, check everything out at once. And this is for the kittens. So we have all five kittens that'll be scheduled over the next couple of weeks. And also to decrease their stress, yes, we could go out and net them and grab them, but we're doing this luckily with a full-time vet here on staff opportunistically. So in the morning, we know they like to move around a lot. And by 10 a.m., they settle down for a mid-morning nap and often they've staged uh, different crates in their areas to see if they'll just fall asleep in there. And then we can shut the door and the caretakers can actually poke and sedate them in the crate in their area and bring them into the hospital sedated. And this is all to decrease their stress because Asian leopard cats are high stress cats. They have poor immunity. Um, they also have shorter life expectancies, you know, about 12 years old. Um, and so all of that is to eliminate their stress. So uh, Apollo did really well. He's already recovered. He's out in his room. Um, and so he, what we call is he's at wild weight, not sanctuary weight, which means he can fill out a little bit, but he is young and under a year old, so they tend to be very lanky um, as species, but definitely as teenagers. And so his eyes looked great and everything else. The one that has the really challenged eyes are Aiden and um, Penelope. Um, Aiden has the cataracts uh, for a kitten, and we don't know if that's trauma or genetic. And so uh, when he's seen, we'll take a closer look to see if there's been any changes there and on all of the cats. We did notice on Apollo, uh, not only did he have a finger missing, um, obviously from fighting with another cat, he had a bit of his tail missing. Um, we know when we bring Aiden in, he's missing most of his tail. Um, we know Mindy is missing her front leg. So, um, you know, they've had, they've had a, quite a bit of history, even though they're not very old cats. So we'll keep you posted on all of those. So I was uh, walking out, um, I'll be honest, I wish I could be out for hours a day. And in the old days, I used to do that. There is so much work to be done with Catio Town coming with hybrids, uh, with this Argentina rescue, with all this industry stuff um, that I haven't been out as frequently as I wanted. So today I'm like, I am gonna go out and get re-energized and see the cats. And it was really fun, I got to see um, Sky and Celine, those two girls that I was hoping they'd be happy and they're still grumbly at each other. Uh, so now the plans are in the work of not only the new bobcat areas and the sushi area you helped um, fund, but we have a few more things we're gonna build from the panels we're taking down from Hybrid Haven so that we have more space if Sky and Celine, which it looks like are never gonna um, go back together, that they can have their own habitat space versus rotating space. Uh, walked around and uh, yesterday, uh, cow, big cow legs, we had cow legs and um, Shanks donated and so Thor Tiger got one and Winona the Tiger got one. And I had assumed she'd eaten her whole thing because her belly was really round today and I learned that she didn't touch it. So she is pretty chubby. They did move her down in diet before but it looks like, um, I've asked Elise if she can go down again. I know she has been very food motivated, but that girl looks like there's another dash on the way. <laughs> we know there's not, so she'll probably have to go down. Uh, and then it was fun because I got to go see uh, everybody, but 
uh, Kaya, the bobcat, just came right up and is super sweet and showing her butt. And then Bogart came over, and it's still just lovely to see that miracle match of those two together. Um, and when I was walking around, Lloyd was just rubbing and grooming and rubbing Bruno like crazy. Um, and so to see those guys so happy, it, it was just, it was really fun to see cats today. Um, Chili's group was out. Uh, Chili actually has done so well with his recent PT um, that he is actually lifting that leg more than we thought he would by now. And so he was approved to get his bridge back, which is his heavy duty physical therapy. So his bridge will be back by this weekend and then he'll start be doing his bridge physical therapy um, as well. So that stuff is really, really fun. Who else did I see when I walked around? I mean, I always see the Ukraine Cubs. Elizabeth is always on her zigzag platform. Um, uh, Indy uh, is always a troublemaker trying to uh, jump up, but um, everybody was really enjoying. We have a really nice, nice sunny day today. Um, and on top of it, we are preparing because crew days start tomorrow. Uh, I think we have double the volunteer crew days that we normally have, and that's to help with teardown and everything going on. And as much as the help is so loved and appreciated, I do know it's more work for our staff who sets it up, who does the crew days, who does the tours. And so um, I'm just so appreciative of all them that have agreed and helped and support to have the extra help because extra help also causes extra work for setup um, to make sure we can get done for the cats what we really want to get done this season. So um, it'll be fun to have the crew day start tomorrow. We have one tomorrow and Saturday. Uh, and then next week, uh, we have our volunteer appreciation lunch in person. And this month, we also have uh, the welcoming back and onboarding and revision of training of our garden crews, our mowing teams. Um, it's just, it's the season is revving up for sure. Uh, and on top of that, because we have construction season starting, because we have uh, the skid steers running around, we have big trucks coming in with boulders for Sushi's Habitat. We're going to have construction materials for Catio Town. We actually went and reviewed the safety manual with most of the animal care staff tomorrow, and we'll do that with the office staff another time, just to remind them of like PPE and to wear ear and goggle protection using certain tools from where to stand when the skid steers around and not letting Kiara out while the big machinery is around. Um, reminders are really good. We are, we are talking today about Sometimes there's so much to teach a new person and so much that everything has a nuance of like, how can we just kind of really talk about it is more of always err on the side of not having to know everything, but know that everything needs a double check, right? So um, second, uh, second check save lives is kind of something we're going to be talking about. We work in pairs around animals because of that. We always have a double check on a lock. Uh, but when it comes to construction or if you're having to repair something or remove um, a wall to get a pool out and put it in is always just looking at second chance save or second checks save lives where we're always getting a second check no matter where what it is not just animal care but everything to have redundancy and for safety um, just like we always say um, locks equals life you want your lock on your habitat to save your life and to save an animal's life so um, things like that. So it's been crazy busy here. I also want to remind everybody that if you want sponsor updates, you can definitely email your sponsor coordinator and ask for specific updates. It's hard for me to reach on and touch on all the cats here for sure at the sanctuary. Um, and it's going to be really crazy. I think over starting June, every time we do probably a weekly wrap up, you're gonna start seeing uh, new enclosures go up, buildings go up, new equipment be here and purchased. Uh, so it's gonna be exciting, exciting season. Um, also, uh, next month, um, we are gonna be doing the public campaign for Catio Town. So stay tuned for that, because I know so many people love the littles and wanna help us finish that building. But right now, I couldn't ask for um, better support than you've been giving and hoping for more support um, through Miracle Match, which is now through April 30th. Uh, Uproar Magazines, the yearbook issue, I heard just hit somebody's home today. 
So stay tuned um, if you get the printed version and are in the United States by giving $25 more or annually, you should be getting that yearbook issue. And then the next couple weeks, we'll also have the uh, online issue uploaded for those that um, prefer the online version of it. So uh, a lot going on as always. And again, my thanks to all of you who make everything we do happen um, without you we would not have these updates and we would not have these wonderful memories that uh, we've been sharing on the Cats Lives who've truly changed uh, because all you do for us. So uh, I hope you guys have a rest of your week, a great rest of your week, and definitely start sharing um, pictures when Uproar hits homes on the group page um, and share us uh, when you're getting your Uproar. We always love to know when people get it. We know across the country it hits at different times. So. Um, we hope you enjoy this yearbook issue and I will see you next week for another weekly wrap up and more on uh, what's ahead for Miracle Match.